this property was transferred to the commissioners of the poor in 1841. But really it starts in 1778. Uh, that is when South Carolina had their first constitution 10 years before the United States had its constitution. And in that constitution, it said the poor shall be supported. In 1789, the Pendleton District was created. Before that, this was Indian country. And from that Pendleton District, Anderson County and Pickens County uh, ended up evolving. On Highway 76, going up to Pendleton, you go under a railroad bridge. Down below that is the road that you're going on. Under that is a stream. If you look to your right, as soon as you go across the 23 mile creek, that is where the original poor house was. In 1839, the state authorized the commissioners of the poor for both Anderson County and Pickens County. Those commissioners uh, were authorized to receive funds that came from the Pendleton, Old Pendleton District that came from selling that property uh, at the uh, stream underneath that bridge. The commissioners of the poor in 1841 then purchased two pieces of land. In red, we have what the land is now how it's being used, the things that are on that property. In the blue were the historic items. This area is where the 1929 county home was located. And then the detention center is right there. Most of the rest of this was used for a county farm and the residents of the county home were doing the farm to raise their own food. And years later, where the recycling center is, that became the stockade for the black prisoners. Up here where the civic center is, was a stockade for the white prisoners. The poor houses, and they were variously described as the almshouses, poor houses, those were not just for the poor. They actually sheltered destitute mothers, illegitimate children, feeble-minded, idiots, epileptics, the blind, deaf, crippled, and sick. There were no hospitals. We have buildings that were still existing after that 1929 building was built. Now, we had not been able to determine where the original county homes were across Campson Road at what is now part of the parking lot of the Civic Center was Anderson's first airfield. But by 1927, this was a field that was being used by private pilots. You can see it's not a level field, and you see a warning sign. And that warning sign says, no trespassing, no grazing stock under penalty of law. This field, the only unlawful dove field run by the county of Anderson. If you were in with the supervisor, you could hunt doves there. You just couldn't shoot at any planes. Also on that field, though, was a what they called a weather station. Now, this seems kind of funny because even if they saw there was bad weather there, they couldn't radio it to the plane because the planes had no radio, except that it had rooms where pilots could rest. It was moved around a couple of times, but it's now right across from the recycling center. Amelia Earhart ended up visiting Anderson. She went on a tour for peach nut gum. She landed out at our airfield and People drove out from Anderson, they, they went up McGee Road, it was the only way they could get there, and she handed out beaches to the children. The first jail in right here, now there was one in, in Pendleton, a small jail in, in the Pendleton district up in Pendleton, but the first jail here was built at the same time as the first courthouse, and it was a little cabin that was behind the courthouse, about where Fleischmann's used to be, and it was fenced in in that area. It was a two-story building, and the person who was the sheriff lived on the, with his family on the first floor, and then they had prisoners on the upper floors. 1898 was when the 
present, what they call the historic courthouse, was constructed. And there was some money left over, and there were also some plans they'd gotten at the same time that they got the plans for the courthouse. So they built a new jail at Church Street and Jail Street. That jail was there and functioning until 1956, uh, or just before that. They moved the prisoners from that jail out to the area where the detention center is right now. And for a while, this jail sat empty. And then finally, uh, although the city tried to acquire it, uh, it was torn down, made into a parking lot. That jail and then the one out at the detention center uh, were really for people who had uh, just been uh, ready for trial, not ones who had been convicted. The convicted ones were able to go out in the country. They were on chain gangs. This is a picture of one of the tents that was used for the prisoners. And what they could do is as they went from road to road, they just folded up the tent, put it on a wagon, uh, attached it to the mules, and they were off to the next road in order to do their work. Sometime after 1939, the county built two stockades for the prisoners. They closed out the portable chain gangs, and they brought all of them into the camps. Now, Camp 1 was the black stockade, and it was exactly where the recycling center is now. Camp 2 was right where the civic center is. Now, these had chain link fences. They had rolled barbed wire on the top. On Camp 2, the white camp, there were two gun towers. Also up at the White Stockade, there was a processing center where they processed uh, the food that they got off the uh, county farm. Um, uh, we know there were a lot of uh, hogs that were processed there because they went out the back door, especially at Christmas time, uh, to uh, people who might vote. In 1969, a civil rights suit was brought because of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. It was required that integration take place with regard to the prisoners. Now at that time, Camp 1, the black camp, was closed. And it hasn't been determined specifically, but I believe that the black prisoners then went to the detention center area, not to Camp 2. I think Camp 2 by the Civic Center at that point was not integrated, but the detention center was. And I think it's because they had better room for facilities at the detention center. 1969, it was closed, and not because of integration. It's because they'd run out of people who, I mean, they had then social security, they had funds that were coming in, they had other ways they could go. Uh, but the last person left in 1969. But along came Mike Glenn. Mike was an attorney here who had been county judge and then became family court judge. Mike was unhappy because what was happening was that all the kids, the juveniles, when they got in trouble, they had to be shipped to Columbia. They couldn't be kept with the adult prisoners. And so they were shipped down to Columbia. This was causing a problem. It was a, it was a problem for the deputies because they had to carry them down to Columbia and back again. It was a problem for the kids because they were away from their families. It was a problem for the families because the kids were away uh, for most families. Uh, it, it was a problem for the judges. It was a problem for the lawyers because how can you defend somebody who's down in Columbia? So Mike got together a group of businessmen and they went to the county and they said, hey, how about letting us have this county home, old county home building as a youth building? They created a separate corporation that would hold it. It wouldn't be a county run operation. It was a separate corporation that they created. And in 1974, they were given the county home for a youth home. It originally was called Anderson County Youth Home and Treatment Center. A little after 10 years, it, the corporation actually moved out. They went over to Standridge Road. And on Standridge Road, that property is called New Foundations Children's Home. And they not only handle children that are there in the home, they go out and 
wherever there are domestic problems where they're needed, they go out and service those. I now want to go over to 1991. That's when the Civic Center was finished. And that is a fantastic facility. Um, now, there had been a lot of question about whether it should be built or not, because in so many communities they had failed. Uh, they weren't money making. But the fact is, they weren't looking at just a money making situation. They were looking at the fact, and, and you had certain leaders in the community, like Pete Stathakis and John Ginn and some others, who said, wait a minute, we need this for the development of Anderson. So they finally got it through and they built the Civic Center. The one thing that people hated about the stockade was the hole where the black stockade was. Now they were identical, the ones at the black and the white stockades. This one still exists. If you're coming out of the gate of the recycling center, the right hand gate, look to your right and there it is. If you look up at the top, you will see a little pipe coming up. That's the only light that came in. It's the only air that came in. But the inside of that is about five feet by five feet by five feet high. Now in 1999, the William Arthur Floyd Amphitheater was installed. And this is the new stage that has just been installed. This is a wall that is built from pellets of shredding tires. And instead of sticking those tires in the dump and filling up the dump, they're shredding them and they're making these things for the wall, but they also do it for streams to keep from having erosion. Uh, they're using the pellets in many ways uh, throughout the 347 acres. This is the old county home cemetery for the county home residents who did not have anybody who could bury them, were not be able to take away. And they're buried here in this cemetery. This building was built in 2000. Unfortunately, they built it for 2000. The sheriff's office is having to operate out of six buildings now. And so they are gonna have to move and will be doing it probably starting at the end of this year and the next year. They're going to have to move out on uh, Highway 28. At that point, they will be able to consolidate. That detention center has to be rebuilt. What they are doing on this is that, number one, they're going to have a juvenile section. They can keep things together so that they don't have to be shifting people around. They're going to have areas where judges can actually come into the detention center and uh, save taking these people out and downtown. Uh, they're going to have psychiatric uh, treatment areas uh, where they can help to rejuvenate them. That's the 347 acres. It's an amazing history, an amazing story. And please, any of you who might have stories that you've heard or know, know about or answers to some of these things, I'd sure love to know. Thank you very much. Thank you.